Bom dia. Bem-vindo. Good morning. Welcome to the public session of presentation of the satellite account of social economy for the years 2019-2020. We will now give the floor to Francisco Lima, who is the uh, um, president of the of Statistics Portugal. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure to have you all here at the session of presentation of the satellite account of the um, social economy. I would like to greet uh, uh, the chair of CASAS um, and uh, different agents and stakeholders of uh, social economy. Uh, technicians that are here, both from Statistics Portugal and also CASAS, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very uh, pleased to uh, be at this uh, meeting, which in fact translates a partnership by uh, Statistics Portugal and CAS, and also, um, you know, to speak about this satellite count, I will explain what this uh, uh, satellite account is. Uh, uh, this year, we had a resolution of the United Nations precisely um, along the lines of promoting and uh, strengthening the sector of uh, um, social economy, um, solidarity economy, and uh, it uh, had to do with statistics that uh, would cover the sector. Now, here in Portugal, we've decided to um, anticipate this uh, 10 years because since 2013 we have the um, framework law uh, for um, social economy and it prescribed the uh, elaboration of a satellite account for social economy and in fact the experience starts um, earlier uh, in 2010 uh, together with uh, CASAS, we've uh, uh, developed the first edition of uh, the uh, satellite account of uh, social economy. And then we had another edition in uh, 2013, then in 2016. And uh, now, I mean, we've had the pandemic um, along the way, and we have now a satellite account that covers two years, and that uh, is, in fact, a, um, gives us an idea uh, of uh, what uh, happened during these uh, last two years. And as you will see during the presentations, the sector even showed a higher um, dynamics when compared uh, with the rest of the economy. So this is why we are here to present this satellite account of uh, social economy. It has some specificities and also advantages, internationally speaking. And uh, it covers the whole sector, all the entities, 
Uh, it tries to be a thorough. It has a modular uh, structure, and this allows us to go into detail and uh, to show the heterogeneity of the sector. And it allows us also to make international comparisons because there are many countries that do not cover all the sectors, all the entities. So this is yet another advantage of our satellite account. Uh, and it also has another feature, which is the fact that it is a case study in international, uh, internationally. Uh, in the uh, United Nations, uh, uh, Eurostat, and is also recognized by renowned uh, researchers such as the late uh, Professor Zed Sa, uh, teacher at the University of Valencia, Joalis um, Monzon, uh, and they uh, highlighted the um, quality of this satellite account. So we have these specificities. We also have something that we try to do, which is to integrate. And this is part of the partnership that we have with uh, uh, CAS. And this has to do with the survey to voluntary work in 2012 and 2018. And I would like to say that it was uh, a this was a model uh, together uh, with the survey to 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 work, and um, it included um, questions on the on work, namely voluntary work, and the reality showed that in fact this is a sector that has uh, that is a very important one in the Portuguese society. And in 2018, we conducted a survey to the sector of social economy that was used to uh, collect more information to further um, enrich the satellite account. And this uh, was something in which uh, we invested. We will have to see which will be uh, the new results of this survey, and it uh, is it concerns very much the way entities are organized, how they relate to their human resources. It had to do with these practices, but it also allowed us to identify some features of the entities of the sector. What I'm going to say has a lot to do with the partnership that uh, we've uh, signed. And uh, I mean, it has to do with what we are able to do with a satellite account. In each edition, we add new realities. We change the structure, sometimes due to this attempt that we need to uh, uh, to have because we're doing, uh, we're working on official statistics to, uh, we have to consider the um, uh, legal um, capacity of the different institutions. Uh, and this is not easy because sometimes there are uh, changes to the uh, legal framework. Uh, and uh, we also have statistical um, classifications and uh, this is very important because it allows us to compare with other countries. We're speaking about nomenclatures that are being uh, harmonized worldwide uh, via the United Nations. Uh, Portuguese, Portugal Statistics participates in the Statistics Committee of the United Nations and there is a permanent discussion on the evolution of the different classifications and uh, um, we are aiming to a, uh, a new uh, classification of, of, uh, of the different items, and uh, um, this will, of course, uh, have an impact in the national uh, account and in the accounts of the um, United Nations. So when we compare several uh, editions, there is this attempt of trying to harmonize things as much as possible and also trying to make things comparable. But the reality keeps changing, and we need to incorporate 
uh, all this uh, um, and see in practical terms, in legal terms, how an entity um, appears and operates in the sector. So this is a permanent challenge. Along this line, satellite accounts For those that have studied economy, economics, uh, uh, there is, you know, uh, an area that uh, uh, teaches how to calculate uh, GDP, uh, the different perspectives to perspectives to, to the different ways to calculate uh, GDP, and uh, this is as if we uh, extracted from this calculation a specific sector, in this case, the sector of social economy. And this is what is the basis of the creation of national uh, accounts. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, corrects the speaker, the satellite accounts. And uh, when we look uh, and when we use the concepts of national accounts, so this a very demanding explanation. We have raw material that is available in national accounts and that allow us to make comparisons, but there is a specific timing. And uh, this is the, uh, this, the, of course, we need to close the accounts of uh, uh, GDP. Uh, and there is always work that needs to be done after the closing of the national accounts. And this is just to say why we do not have uh, satellite accounts on a more frequent basis. Portugal has been an example, not only in uh, satellite accounts, but also in terms of production of satellite accounts in other sectors, uh, Some uh, in some areas there has been a consensus uh, uh, at a European level um, regarding a set of satellite accounts in the uh, fields of health and agriculture. But Portugal has been an example of production and innovation in satellite accounts. We have uh, satellite accounts in tourism, culture, uh, sports, and also uh, the areas of the sea, and we've helped several uh, countries doing this as well. We would like to do more, but of course, resources are limited. We need to uh, manage different priorities, but in fact, the satellite account of social economy has been one of the most um, regular ones. It's not part of the European regulations, and it has been very um, gratifying to uh, participate in this work and to um, actually present the results of this work to you uh, here today. Now, the satellite account covers a period of two years. We've analyzed the evolution between 2019 and 2020. Uh, there is uh, uh, new information, especially administrative information and some uh, new things that we will see here today in terms of an additional analysis vis-a-vis -vis the last satellite account, especially, for instance, the um, issue of uh, gross added value um, in cooperatives and the issue of the analysis or trying to see the contribution of social economy. It is always uh, a bit complicated to have statistical evidence uh, for the several um, objectives of the devel devel uh, sustainable development, also the objectives of societies that, of companies that are, uh, of institutions that have a 100 percent participation from um, certain other institutions. Um, a survey implies the definition of a universe. We define a sample. We need to have a, a, a universe. It's not uh, like, you know, surveys that you conduct uh, in the street. We, we need to have a universe. And this is why it is important to have this partnership with CAS. What kind of uh, universe will we uh, have uh, to get our sample, to create our survey, and to define the borders of the sector 
to uh, then actually get to the satellite account. So this was a challenge that uh, uh, bared its fruit. The satellite account is also a good example of partnership. Now, Statistics uh, Portugal has promoted partnerships a lot. These practices uh, tend to disappear, but uh, we do have lots of these practices uh, um, within uh, public administration. Um, sometimes, uh, nevertheless, entities tend to work in silos, and they do not understand what their mission is all about. And Statistics Portugal has tried to promote these partnerships using the example, for instance, of CASAS. This is a um, specific partnership because there is a strong um, complementarity um, between what we do, the knowledge of the sector that CASAS has. And you know, from time to time, we do need to uh, actually um, uh, stimulate each other when it comes to defining new indicators. And it is very important to have a proximity with the sector. This is also um, present in other partnerships that we have, for instance, with the uh, reuse of our uh, data, the data, the information that we produce. I say our uh, data, but it is data that belongs to the country, to Portugal, data that has to do with specific um, sites that can be used to show um, the data that we have, partnerships with the academia, or partnerships that are connected to the development of statistic information related to social economy. And I'm speaking of the use of administrative data. We've uh, tried to intensify the use of this data together with data from social economy uh, and this will allow us to actually uh, go uh, deeper and uh, into reality. We see that this is a um, process that is evolving statistically speaking but there is still a lot to be done namely when it comes to um, you know people involved in the sector and also beneficiaries having more data for beneficiaries um, administrative information will allow at least in some sectors such as uh, health and education to to promote to do this um, we, uh, you know, via the integration of information, we create new sets of data. We can't look into uh, data um, individually. We integrate all this with data from the tax authorities, from uh, education, um, and this allows us to create new sets of data and new statistics. This is why in 2018 we started to create a national data framework and uh, one of its features is the integration of these different sources. Um, to have CASAS with here is very, with us, is very important and uh, this is very much present in the data that have to do with the interaction between citizens and the state but also um, companies and organizations and also access to data from institutions themselves because uh, you have lots of administrative data uh, specifically in uh, social economy but that will not be enough most likely in some sectors it will be important to have access via surveys or the development of platforms for instance in the case of tourism we are uh, developing this area because uh, we have a lot of difficulty uh, when it comes to sharing information uh, specifically when it comes to uh, lower uh, size entities so we are working on uh, platforms that uh, will uh, facilitate the sharing of this kind of uh, data and information. Um, so I would like to appeal to all of you. I mean, when uh, we, uh, Statistics Portugal, uh, uh, knocks uh, on uh, your door, namely via digital means, we need to understand um, why things are being done this this uh, uh, way. Statistics 
do not result from a, a sort of a magical part. Even with artificial intelligence, we need to have uh, raw material, and data are raw material. This is the information that we need, and I would like to um, appeal to all of you. We need to think that there is a um, result when we are asking for information um, from uh, public entities uh, or public uh, or private entities that operate in the sector of uh, social economy, it is very important to um, keep uh, this in mind. Your uh, participation is also important because without your participation, we will not have good statistics. And statistics are important to assess the sector and to uh, the process of decision making. Now, I would like to thank the partnership. I mean, this is very important, the way partnerships evolve. Uh, their longevity uh, means that uh, uh, partnerships do not depend from uh, the people that are um, in charge of different uh, entities. Uh, it depends on the relationship existing between different institutions. And this is why protocols are important. So it is very important to see how these uh, relationships translate uh, uh, throughout the years. I would like to thank the uh, work of the uh, different uh, technicians involved, namely those from Statistic Portugal. This represents an effort. I would like to thank them for their commitment. Uh, we sometimes make uh, considerations on uh, civil servants. Uh, uh, I don't want to go into that, but uh, you know, I've uh, uh, been here since uh, 2018, uh, and what we've been able to do uh, also during the pandemic, uh, we've continued to expand our production, uh, and uh, most of it results from the in house uh, culture. Uh, the fact that our uh, staff uh, are here to serve uh, the public. And uh, this is increasingly uh, more important than this information. The information that they produce uh, needs to be um, trustworthy and independent from public political powers. There is uh, uh, some kind of uh, social contract. We need to trust on uh, statistics, official statistics, namely uh, those of Statistic Portugal uh, and, and uh, other, other entities. So thank you very much to all the technicians that uh, participated in this uh, work. There is also another side of this. Uh, uh, which has to do with uh, the return of all this. We've, uh, of course, tried to um, change this kind of situations as far as we can, but I'm not going to uh, go into this. Uh, so uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for any comments, any um, criticism, uh, comments. Uh, this is something that uh, is very important, and uh, we have uh, Kaz doing this. Uh, but it is also important to have, uh, you know, this feedback in terms of uh, um, clarity and in terms of what can be done uh, when it comes to producing uh, statistics. So once again, uh, be uh, most welcome. Thank you for your presence. We're going to be listening to Eduardo Graça, the chairman of the board of the Antonio Sergio Cooperative for Social Economy. Morning. I hope um, that you can hear me well. I hope that you can hear me well. So as the speaker, first of all, I'd like to greet uh, 
uh, Professor Francisco Lima, the uh, President of Statistics Portugal, and I'd like to greet all of those who represent social economy entities who are here of the different sectors of social economy. And also like to greet the um, leaders of other associations, as well as the professionals of the public administration uh, who are here, here in this room. And also let me greet all of those who um, follow us via streaming in Portugal and outside Portugal. And I hope that this session will be of interest to you, particularly regarding the uh, following presentations. The presentations which will follow my brief address. So this is the reason why we are making a presentation on um, the um, social economy sector. The minister will be arriving any minute now. I'd like to thank the National Institute of of statistics in the person of its president for the um, his availability uh, and his willingness it has shown in the last 10 years to include the development of the satellite account for social economy in Hispanic activities. These working together and the sharing of knowledge bring together um, true interests and wills is one of the best experience that we can experience as leaders of organizations working for the public interest. Besides, this project is one of those which um, has the best uh, price quality ratio. Given that the costs are internalized, um, and particularly those which are charged to the respective entities, and this aspect, which is practically never mentioned, is not as significant. It is quite relevant if we if we think about the prices we uh, see in the markets um, of, of these sorts of studies. I'd like to thank uh, Statistic Portugal and the experts of CASAS who at the front for, forefront have um, worked on this um, settled account, namely Cristina Ramos, who is not here uh, for personal reasons, Karina Rodrigues, who here, which will be part of the presentation, representing statistics Portugal, Eduardo Pedroso, another presenter, and Edna Neves, who is also with us. Quite often, the real workers um, are anonymous, a bad practice that I don't endorse, even uh, although it is uh, traditional. I'd also like to uh, refer to the fact that the session is being held in this um, space, although quite old-fashioned speaking of um, a tradition of the formal uh, Portuguese public libraries. It's a noble space and it's also the house of national statistics, which is equally relevant. So I'd like, I also, um, this is why I've asked Statistic Portugal to um, have this event uh, in this room, um, and which has been taking place since 2013. And I'd like to thank the minister, um, although she's not yet present. I'd like to thank the minister, who will be coming shortly, for her participation in session, which um, shows the, her interest in the social economy sector. And um, encouragement to continue on our path. Statistics um, are becoming more and more relevant in all areas of human activity, allowing to shedding light on the micromanagement and public policies. Uh, referring to the um, to the bulk of the results presented by the satellite account, um, which will be presented in the table below, um, can be described into us. So the sector has grown again, and we have a better knowledge of the sector by focusing on data from two years, 2019, 2020, um, um, during the uh, COVID-19 pandemics. This edition of the satellite account show us 
how health activities have gained a stronger expression within the social economy. So it has increased um, a series of levels in the hierarchy of the several activities social economy is um, developed. It also in view of some uh, methodological changes which have included residential homes within the health sector, which was not the case beforehand. So this together with the pandemic made the health sector to gain great predominance in 2020. Lastly, and the most relevant uh, feature, globally speaking, it's the fact that this sector um, has a counter-cyclical cyclical performance. So the results of the satellite account tell us Tell us about this nature of the sector of contributing for the economy and society. Do not um, decrease as much as it would be expected if the social economy had followed the performance of other sectors. And the, uh, the increase from 29 to 20 is 3.2%. And the economy, the national economy, has decreased quite a lot. So our sector, this sector, has quite a relevant input for the improvement of society besides economic factors. So this is a fourth edition of the satellite account. And it's a very significant fact. We are dealing with, with a statistical series. After four editions, we can aspire to make comparisons how this sector uh, performs within the Portuguese society and Portuguese economy. As um, the president of the Statistics Portal mentioned, we have accounts from 2010, 2013, 2016, and currently 2019 and 2020. So covering one decade um, based on the signing in April 2011 of several cooperation protocols between cases and Statistics Portugal. And I hope that soon we'll be able to sign a new agreement uh, which will allow us to produce the fifth edition of the satellite account, incorporating new methodologies and more extensive information, particularly coming from the permanent database of social economy entities, which are now preparing and new sources that Statistics Portugal has access to. So I believe that these will bring about a very um, remarkable evolution as the president of Statistics Portugal said. So data, more data can be made available to inform uh, the new edition of the satellite account. As um, the president said, this is the results of a um, the process for making of um, the satellite account um, legalized by the uh, social economy framework law in 2013, although we had started this process earlier on. So it was a practice of the development of this process which probably led to it being um, included in the law. And I believe that um, this circumstance is a great interest. It's safe to say that the satellite ac account we've been producing continues to be original and unique. And it's different from all the others because it encompasses in, in, with its universe of study a premise so that includes all social economy organizations considering the framework law. So this is a reality which is um, include us in the framework law. We know that in the near future, new uh, formulations may arise, new entities that may come to be included in the perimeter of social economy. And in that case, the satellite account will have to evolve, taking on board these new legal uh, entities, particularly the um, the social um, company, which is currently being discussed in European law, and which have we have been discussing internally, we 
with some as um, partners in the sector. So I hope that briefly some um, innovations will come to um, be um, be seen in conceptual and legal terms. So and uh, these new uh, forms of social economy will be included in this new protocol with Statistics Portugal. The president of Statistics Portugal has has said that there is an aggregate of sub-accounts in which the realities is of different various of social economy entities are dealt with, namely cooperatives, the mutual societies, the misericordias, the charities, foundations, associations, and the social economy entities, plus the eclectic group of organizations with the status of private institutions of social solidarity, IPSS. And I'm referring to these in particular uh, because this session is being streamed abroad and there are many people who are seeing this session um, from abroad and they do require some um, more detailed information regarding uh, the Portuguese reality. So this is a broad spectrum satellite account, which is innovative with inherent risks of methodology that deals with the need of bringing together statistical information from entities from, they are so close in terms of their principles and values, but at the same time so different in economic and sociological terms, which have never been studied in such a broad and comprehensive way. Let me mention the rationale behind our action in the last in the last ten years. of our cooperation in and particularly collaboration with Kazish that I preside over thinking about the, the different entities which make up the social economy sector, which have different legal um, natures or legal types. We have been trying to gather them around common our uh, goals, uniting them, although respecting their um, differences, we can we can do otherwise. In this aspect, um, satellite account is a very powerful tool. It enables us to uh, analyze the ways and the role of this sector within the Portuguese economy and society, and at the same time, the safeguard the identity of the different families within social economy. So nobody is going to um, uh, change the identity of the mutual societies, of the misericordias, the charities, the associations, the foundations, of any of the families which make part of the social economy. But bearing in mind that common values are very strong, these these different entities should be considered before society as a, an entity which mm, has common goals and projects, which has a common vision of society. So the sector is united around the um, associativism, which is the basis for practically all organizations. So all these organizations are based on associativism. So they um, respond to the needs and interests of citizens which get together to pursue certain goals. And the associativism and associations as a whole are a reality which goes beyond um, the different periods. Go, it goes beyond the, the governments. As uh, Antonio Barret wrote in an article not so long ago, the associativism and associations are in Portugal at the same level of, as of the armed forces or the Catholic Church. They are a power um, deeply rooted in society, which derives from citizens being united to uh, attain certain goals. This is a reality which transcends um, the circumstances of each uh, period. This is why it is so, they're so important. 
you know, these associations and these entities are so present in the daily life of citizens that they are taken for granted. And their work is extremely well known and um, their position in, in society is um, public and well known. So uh, the contemporary social economy Um, follows a very strong um, historic tradition whose memory should be um, kindled. And for many uh, decades, it was made up of, of a series of uh, very close families that were close to each other in terms of common principles of values, but distance uh, from each other in terms of um, debate and action, as well as our relations with the public authorities. Allow me to briefly uh, list three possible um, points that link statistical issues with development strategy of the social economy. Statistics contribute for the knowledge and recognition of the social economy sector enshrined in the constitution of the Portuguese Republic as cooperative and social sector, highlighting its significant weight in Portuguese economy and society. Secondly, statistics provide public authorities with credible and certified information regarding the reality of the sector responding to the challenged which can be portrayed in a sentence that the French have popularized, sans chiffre, pas de politique. Without figures, there is, there is no, there are no policies. So figures are extremely important to um, draw policies. So here, together with the statistics portrait, we're giving an extremely important um, contribution for the making of the policies. Statistics densify the concepts of social economy, bringing it closer to its operational reality, opening a space to discuss the way in the timing of the union of worlds of the different families of social economy while respecting their autonomy as well as the new needs and realities emerging in the sector. After a long historical period, in terms of reinventing the concept of social economy with its potential and constraints, both politically, institutional, legally, uh, economically, and socially, Portugal has taken a leap forward in a short period since 2010, placing in turn itself to the admiration of those most attentive to phenomena at the forefront at European and also worldwide level. Regarding the future, CASAS will promote two relevant activities from the end of 2023. Uh, with a focus on the settlement account. It will organize a discussion with its members, the SPESH and the CNES, on the future of the satellite account. This meeting will be an opportunity to disseminate and at the same time listen to the sector regarding methodology, choice of indicators, specific analysis, and other topics relevant to satellite account. This is n nothing new and which has already been mentioned by the president, um, Mr. Lima. Um, it's finding a way of gathering information directly from each entities of the social economy, particularly those which are particularly relevant, so that we might find new paths, innovative path to create future satellite accounts. As mentioned, the Portuguese satellite account is often held as an example of good practice in best practice in the field of statistics. So there was an idea of um, carrying out, of um, organizing a peer learning activity in Portugal supported by the European Commission's mutual learning program. The program's peer learning event will provide fora for representatives of European governments to exchange information and experiences on topics related to European employment strategy and Europe, European pillar of social rights. Um, at the start of 2024, we will put into effect this initiative, which I hope will have the support of many European entities in, interested in discussing, in discussing these matters. The events are aimed at national authorities, but they also involve other relevant stakeholders from the host countries, such as NGOs, social partners, 
as well as independent experts who can contribute toward, towards a broader knowledge, including background documents prepared before the meetings on behalf of Kansas. I'd like to thank everyone for being here, those who are here with us in person and those who uh, follow us at a distance, hoping that we will achieve the goals that we have set for the new future. And I hope that we're not like either the willpower or the resources to carry out this exciting and challenging project. Thank you very much. We will now move to the presentation of the results of the satellite account of uh, social economy for the years 2019-2020. We would like to give the floor to Karina Rodrigues, technician of statistics, Portugal, and after her, we will uh, listen to Eduardo Toso. Good morning, everyone. I would like to greet, first of all, the uh, chairs of INE and uh, CASUS, and I'd like to greet all uh, those of you that are here present uh, and all those that are with us uh, via streaming. For those that uh, do not know me, uh, my name is Karina Rodrigues. I'm one of the uh, technicians of uh, Statistic Portugal's that has been involved in uh, this account. I've been participating in this project since the second uh, edition, and I'm making this presentation because the head of our department, Hannah Christina Ramos, could not be here with us. Uh, nevertheless, she um, monitored this whole uh, process regarding this new edition of the account, and uh, she also um, was involved in the um, production of this uh, presentation. Um, it is, of course, impossible to replace an Christina, but I will try to uh, present the results as clear as possible and in a brief uh, manner as well. And um, I would like to uh, start by thanking all colleagues from uh, Statistics Portugal that uh, worked on this project. I'm uh, just the uh, visible face of all of them. This is a big project. It involves many people from many departments, uh, almost all the departments, and uh, I mean people that work in the uh, system uh, of, of informing or collecting information for the different statistic um, units, uh, uh, all colleagues involved in the portal, and those that prepare this session. Uh, there is a saying that uh, says that uh, in order to educate a child, you need a whole village. In the case of social education, we need not the in the case of uh, um, social economy, we need not only one institution, but two institutions in this case. Uh, and these uh, two institutions have been very uh, dynamic. Uh, when it comes to um, collecting all the information and uh, um, acquiring all uh, this uh, data. Now, moving into the first part of the presentation that will be uh, made by myself, and the second part will be made by my colleague, Eduard Pedoso from CALS. I would like to mention that our part of the presentation is focused essentially into aspects one uh, concerning a brief explanation on what is a satellite account and the brief analysis of the time frame of this uh, um, satellite account project and uh, certain aspects of the methodology. And after that, we will present the main results and I will try to focus myself on a, an analysis of trends and not on figures because uh, this is the first time we've had this experience of making a satellite account for a two-year period. Uh, and uh, I invite you all to um, look into uh, our highlight that has been published in uh, June and uh, the, uh, this, this publication that we are presenting here, and namely the data that will be um, 
uh, shared with you during the, the second part of this presentation. So starting uh, by explaining to you uh, what is a satellite account, our uh, chairman, ha president has made uh, as, as explained to you that, to a certain extent, the satellite account is an extension or an extraction with a higher detail of national accounts, and the main objective is to increase the visibility of certain phenomena or topics that are usually scattered by different uh, nomenclature codes or branches of economic activity. Therefore, the objective of a satellite account is to um, get information from the national accounts and present that information in a simpler way and in a more intelligible way to uh, the users of that information. The uh, big advantage of this uh, a um, satellite account is to allow for a comparison of certain economic activities, both at national and international level. And uh, we've uh, had lots of uh, um, requests to create satellite accounts, and these are kind of lingua franca of uh, uh, thematic uh, uh, national accounts. As you can see, besides the account of uh, social economy, we also make available information for the satellite accounts. Some of them are prescribed by EU regulations, for instance, agriculture, uh, forestry, environment. Um, environment, in fact, encompasses several other satellite accounts, and certain others are only uh, prescribed in national regulations, such as the account of the sea and uh, uh, social economy. A brief analysis of uh, the project that was also mentioned by the uh, two speakers before me. Uh, we started work for this account in 2010. We started to make a thorough study of non-profitable organizations that were serving uh, companies, and this is what we call S15 in our accounts. And this led in 2011 to the presentation of the results, the first and the unique satellite account of uh, um, non-profitable institutions, and uh, it also included uh, other non-profitable institutions that were uh, a part of other sectors of national accounts. So these were the first projects. This uh, was how everything started, and after a certain uh, after a and after that, we started to have this uh, partnership with CASAS. Uh, now, the um, satellite account includes also cooperatives and uh, uh, mutual societies. As we can see, this work that was done together with CASAS uh, was not only centered on the social uh, on the satellite account for social economy because we also conducted two uh, surveys to voluntary work. The first one was conducted in 2012 and it was presented uh, in our first edition uh, of the uh, social economy um, account and there was a second survey to voluntary work conducted in 2018 that was presented um, together with the third edition of the um, satellite account of social uh, economy. Now in 2023, we are presented the fourth edition uh, that looks into two years and uh, we uh, try to assess or to study how social economy behaved or was affected during the pandemic of uh, COVID-19 that changed our lives as we all know. Very briefly, I would like to mention the differences in the uh, methodologies of the four editions of this uh, satellite account of social economy. As we can see during the first edition of the satellite account, we uh, worked according to the um, previous uh, accounts. Uh, system and it was based on national accounts 
the main reference was a manual of the United uh, Nations, a handbook of national a handbook on nonprofit uh, institutions, and then a, a handbook on uh, Syriac that uh, uh, that had to do with mutual societies and uh, cooperatives. The second edition. Uh, was based also on the national accounts, the basis of uh, 2011, and more important, in the field of uh, methodological references, we had the uh, basic uh, um, the economy framework uh, law for social economy and also the subsectors uh, for um, self-managed uh, community and self-managed uh, subsectors. In 2016, we used the um, uh, national accounts and the main innovation was the new man handbook of uh, the United Nations that uh, um, included some differences, namely a specific nomenclature for uh, social economy or the third sector, as it is mentioned by the United Nations and that was adapted in the satellite account to replace the previous uh, classification that was uh, that we used beforehand and that was designed by uh, statistics portugal and uh, cas last in this uh, um, last edition we continue to use this uh, methodological references the um, european system of accounts is the same but we have a new um, framework law of 2016 we conducted a also we were based also on the survey conducted to social economy of uh, um, 2018 and uh, this also led to us to reclassify because in this survey we asked um, respondents to uh, self-classify themselves in the nomenclature of the United Nations, and we started to use this uh, um, classification that was made by the different institutions of their um, specific activity. Uh, we feel it is always important to, to alert people to these methodologies because uh, it has to do with the um, comparison of uh, data between the different uh, um, editions, and uh, uh, we have, this is why we mentioned this uh, several uh, differences that occurred between the first edition and this uh, fourth edition. Um, the basic um, the framework law uh, we consider it to be a very important document. It defines the different entities that have been mentioned, so I won't go into that. It defines also a, uh, guidelines that uh, should uh, be considered. After defining uh, the entities, these are, these are prescribed in the framework law. Our work um, has to do with trying to see which are the non-profitable institutions so that we include them in the account. They are all included uh, except the sector of public administrations and the subsector, which is S11001. This can be also conducted and consulted in the methodology. We provide all the exclusions and the um, non-profitable institutions that serve families is partially included in the account. We've um, uh, also uh, tried to find uh, cooperatives and mutual societies, and these are the entities that uh, are uh, present in this uh, account. Um, it seems that this is uh, a very uh, easy thing to do. However, that is not the case. We try to make information available not only for the set of entities, but uh, we've always been very um, concerned with uh, presenting a modular approach. Another challenge we had in our work when we produced the satellite account was to compile the methodological uh, approaches and, and uh, um, guidelines that are not always compatible. 
the modular approach that uh, has been part of this account since the very beginning is a multidimensional one. We try to present results for the different institutional sectors of national accounts, uh, especially for the major uh, sets, also uh, according to the different activities, according to the international uh, classification of non-profitable inst institutions. And um, the third sector, this is the nomenclature of the uh, UN handbook I mentioned uh, earlier on, and also for uh, entities and uh, uh, families uh, and that are part of the framework law of uh, social economy. The account has also uh, made available information for IPSS institutions because these are prescribed in the um, framework law and they are very important for social economy. More recently, since the previous edition, we've also included uh, NGO information and also on um, information that uh, represent migrants and their descendants. Um, now, um, the sources are mentioned here, some are from Statistic Portugal, other uh, come from other um, administrative sources. The most important are the uh, universe of national accounts and the integrated uh, system of statistic uh, units, which are uh, cornerstones to define this uh, universe. And without this, the definitions, we cannot really start this work of uh, uh, collecting economic uh, information. In this new edition, the main um, new aspects are the uh, survey to the sector of social economy that has been mentioned here. We collected uh, a lot of additional information. Uh, also, the census of 2021 uh, and the uh, uh, survey on agriculture in 2019. And without further ado, I will move to the presentation of the main results of the uh, satellite account. These have been identified, I mean, in this new edition, we identified uh, 73,557 and uh, 74 uh, entities in uh, 2019 and 73,851 in 2021. Here is the distribution according to the different groups, and we see that most of the entities is concentrated in um, altruistic institutions. The second number of relevant institutions are cooperatives, and I'd like to uh, say that if you add all these totals, you will not obtain 100% because the group of IPSS institutions is uh, not yet a group or a family, but an, uh, sort of an overarching group uh, when it comes to all the groups. So we cannot add the percentage of uh, IPSS to that of the other families. And I'd like to say that IPSS institutions represent 7.5% in 2019 and 77.4% in 2020 uh, when it comes to um, entities of social economy. This year we also presented information on the different life stages of the different entities in each of the groups. These are uh, data for uh, the universe of 2020. Uh, in uh, mutual societies and also in misericordia, more than 70% and 80% of institutions respectively are either mature or uh, have uh, uh, more uh, than 100 years of life. And this obviously distinguishes these two groups from all the other groups of families of social um, economy. We can see that altruistic institutions are those where we have a higher number of new entities, meaning entities that have been created less than five years ago. This is also a, a feature, a distinguishing feature. On this slide, I'd like also to mention that the scale of life stages or longevity, whatever you want to call it, was uh, um, created from a study on foundations from the Portuguese Center for Foundations and was adapted 
the, the scale of the study was adapted to create this, and I would like to um, express our uh, acknowledgement uh, to the uh, head of the study, Professor Raquel uh, French Campo. She was kind enough to send us uh, additional information on the scale that we used to produce the study. Uh, also, uh, regarding the featuring of these activities, we looked into the territorial distribution according to the different municipalities, and we can see that there is no um, municipality that uh, uh, has uh, uh, not at least one um, entity of social economy. Most of these uh, uh, social economy um, entities are concentrated uh, along the coastline, uh, especially Oeiras, Sintra Cascais, in the area of Lisbon, and Vila Nova de Gaia, in the case of uh, um, Oporto being uh, the ones. Uh, with more prevalence, and there are other um, areas such as uh, Braga and Coimbra that also have a higher concentration of uh, uh, social um, economy um, entities. Some concentration in municipalities in uh, in areas of the country. I would like to highlight Beja, Évora, Castelo Branco, Viseu. Uh, Braga and Vila Real, but we also have others. And we see that in the autonomous region of the Azores, we have a higher concentration in the municipalities of Ponta Delgada and uh, Angra do Iguismo, and in the autonomous region of Madeira, a higher concentration in the municipality of Funchal. But 1,000 inhabitants in each of the not uh, two, uh, considering as reference the population of 2021, we see that there is a higher average of entities uh, per 1,000 inhabitants in the autonomous regions of the Azores and the Alentejo, and a lower average in the autonomous region of Madeira. Now, moving into the analysis of the main macroeconomic indicators of the account, we were able to create this uh, um, chart that uh, shows the weight of uh, social economy in the national economy uh, during the different uh, editions of the account. The first thing we would like to highlight is a uh, stability of the figures uh, uh, the, regarding the relevance of social economy uh, in the national economy. There is a uh, growing trend of the weight of the gross added value. value. We will look into uh, this uh, later on. And in 2000, and, uh, 13, when we had the Troika here in Portugal, and 2020, the first year of the pandemic, the weight of uh, social economy in the national economy was not subject to fluctuations or negative variations vis-a-vis -vis the previous year, as we can see uh, in the case of 2019 or 2020, this last edition. This is uh, something that allows us to say that the social economy has some resilience uh, during a crisis and that it works as a shock observer. Um, this looks into the rate of variation of the different indicators of social economy and national economy in 2020 vis-à-vis -vis the previous year. So uh, pandemic versus pre-pandemic. We see that uh, there are positive uh, variations in 2020. Uh, some, in fact, are not very uh, significant, but they are a positive national economy, we uh, see uh, negative changes, especially um, important in the case of gross added value and, uh, and uh, we, uh, this slide 
I believe it shows that at least during the pandemic or during the first year of the pandemic, social economy was more resilient than the national economy and uh, it worked in a counter cycle. Within the scope of the modular analysis, um, we always perform an analysis of the main activities and we can see that in terms of the activities, the main activity was culture, communication and leisure uh, and recreational activities that uh, um, accounts for uh, almost 45 percent of uh, uh, the um, satellite account. And despite the fact that you know this is dominant in terms of the uh, gross added value, uh, it does not have a big expression as far as uh, uh, GVA is concerned. Health and social services uh, were kind of hand in hand, but in 2020, the weight of health was above that of social services. In remuneration in 2019, social services uh, were more significant, but in 2020, um, the health factor was above uh, that of the social services. And in remunerated um, work, health was always more important and accounted for almost one third of the remunerated uh, employment in social economy. With these fluctuations and the analysis of these two years, we can conclude that in 2020, the first year of the pandemic, health was the main activity in terms of um, GDP and value of social economy. Verificamos que in relation to groups of farmers, both in terms of GVA and uh, um, remunerated employment, the altruistic uh, organizations are the dominant uh, family, um, having more than 60% of GVA, more than 75% of the remunerated work. Cooperatives are the second most relevant group. In the paid work, the second most relevant group are misericordia, the charities. Now, let's go into further detail of each one of the families of social economy. I'm just going to mention the trans cooperatives um, show a decrease in all indicators with the exception of GVA with an increase of 1.3%. Mutual societies, or the number is um, the same, uh, GVA and remunerations increase, but they show a very slight decrease in terms of employment. Misericordia are stable in terms of number of entities. Let me mention, by the way, that despite the number of entities being the same in 19 and 20, they don't mean that they are exactly the same because they some uh, finish their activities and there are some new misericordias that, you know, or some entities that um, are created within the families. So it's an illusion to think that they're exactly the same entities in 2019 and 2020. We see that the number is stable. We've seen an increase in all indicators, uh, macroeconomic indicators of the account. In relation to foundations, uh, also um, the same um, number, 618, show a decrease in all indicators with the exception of remunerations. Which, which increased. Lastly, the most relevant group uh, with a high number of uh, entities in a greater weight has shown a um, growth in all indicators with the exception of GVA with a slight decrease. After this brief analysis and of the different uh, families, um, GVA has only decreased in the group of the, um, the sub um, communities and the associations of altruistic ends, but this decrease was um, compensated by the GVA growth in the remaining families, cooperatives, mutual societies, and misericordias. Thus, there's been an increase of uh, gross value added of social economy in 2020 compared to 2019. Now, going into these statues, um, the classical analysis of uh, the private um, uh, institutes of social solidarity. There were 500, um, 5,511 5, in 2019, 5,476 in 2020. 
regarding distribution, they are mostly um, dealing a, working in social sectors, then health and education. These are the three areas, main areas, where EIPSS operates in Portugal. If you look at the GBA um, for IPSS, health is the most relevant activity, both in 19 and 20. The second activity are social services, and the third, education. But the uh, predominance are these three areas of activities. As I mentioned before, although they only represent 7.5 and 7.4 uh, percent in 19 and 20, respectively, in terms of number of entities, the relative importance of IPSS in social economy is rather significant. The 5,500 units approximately represent almost 45% of gross value added, more than 50% of remunerations and more than 60% of paid jobs in social economy. In this graph, we can see the relative stability of uh, figures in, um, in the edition of 2016 and in the current edition, 1920. There is a certain stability, which you can see in the third latest editions, and a slight increase of the relevance of the subsidies to production in IPSS, which I believe is, has to do with the public policies, namely the um, funding created by the government to um, finance the um, operations of IPSS during the first year of the pandemic. We also see that there, in terms of number of entities and in terms of GVA, we have the NGOs for people with disabilities and the uh, NGDOs, NGOs for development. In relation to international comparisons, let me start by saying that satellite accounts um, the, one of the goals is to enable some comparisons, but we like to make some disclaimers. Um, you have to be cautious when comparing them. One which is very clear, for instance, the uh, reference years of the information, we are not comparing the same years, and sometimes the economic situation is um, differs, as we could see in 2020 uh, in the national economy. So when comparing the uh, relevance of uh, social economy within national economies. We have to take this on. We have to bear this in mind. Not all countries uh, include all units. There are some specificities uh, for each country. Sometimes we are comparing. We're not comparing exactly the same thing. Still, we uh, included decide to include European countries with information provided by uh, national statistical institutes, or in the case of Belgium, Belgium, the Bank of Belgium, which uh, provides the data. We know that there are the um, non-official studies or non-official surveys which have a different type of information with other indicators such as analysis of the turnover um, compared with the GDP. But we decided to make this comparison with European countries with official statistical data. Although there are only a few such countries, and we see that Portugal is pretty good when compared with other countries, Eurostat has, well, has tried to support countries wishing to implement uh, satellite accounts in social economy. Eurostat has uh, provided grants to some countries to implement their own satellite accounts and also created a task force which worked during 2020-2021. Um, 20, For instance, Portugal and Belgium um, presented the, um, the results of the work developed in this field. Some of these countries also um, was supported by the uh, task force and the uh, grant provided by Eurostat. So it's a very important contribution by Eurostat so that we can have more statistics available at international level, such as the case of the accounts of Poland and Luxembourg. 
Another international comparison we make regards employment, the um, paid employment um, comparison between the social economy and national economy. In this case, not all satellite accounts in different countries have information on employment. We decided to use the Syriac study data referred to 2014-2015 for most cases. So um, we use the uh, um, figures for Portugal and it's still uh, on the um, position number 11 between Stone, Estonia and Denmark, exactly the same position it held in the previous edition, although the weight of the remunerated employment was slightly higher. So let me conclude the first part of my presentation. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I hope that this information will be useful. I will leave, I will uh, ask you to uh, consult the publication which will now be made public. And I'll pass the floor to Eduard Gross. Olá, bom dia a todos. Um, só esperar que depois coloquem a minha apresentação. Uh, eu gostaria de começar por cumprimentar os presidentes do INEA e da CASES e também a senhora ministra, que agora está presente aqui connosco, e obviamente também estender o meu agradecimento a todos aqueles que dedicaram a sua manhã para estar aqui connosco presencialmente ou em streaming para a divulgação de mais uma edição da Conta Satélite. O meu nome é Eduardo Pedroso, como já foi referido. Account. Oh, my name is Eduardo Pedroso. I'm responsible for the uh, statistics um, in, in cases, and um, and I've been working with Statistics Portugal in this new edition. That, as my colleague said, well, in fact, this entails a very uh, a great deal of collective work. It's a very complex tool, so I'd like to thank all professionals from Statistics Portugal and my colleagues in my institute, without which I could not have um, prepared this work. Karina made a presentation of the main uh, results, particularly the main macroeconomic indicators. The truth is that our strategic goal for each new edition, we wanted to include more um, special um, results which enable us to give a greater detail um, in this sector. These results are obtained via uh, getting some administrative data or using other data which are in Statistics Portugal. And it is precisely on these special results that I will focus my presentation. Let me add that although some of these um, results have been presented on the 31st July when the satellite account was publicized, most of them are only here made public through the publication that we will have access um, via the website of INE. You have a QR code at the entrance. But at the end of my um, the presentation, I will explain how you can access this publication. As mentioned, I will focus on special subsectors of the satellite account. I will start by a result which is not new. It was present uh, in the previous editions. The participants, uh, commercial society is 100% owned by cooperative capitals. Let me stress that these organizations, both legally and conceptually, are not included within the scope of social economy. So all the figures presented by Karina do not include data from these organizations. However, in the previous edition and in this edition, we consider that providing this data allow, on one hand, a better understanding of the input of the cooperatives for national economy. These organizations have a very significant relevance in this sector. And on the other hand, because despite conceptually, these entities are not included in the scope of social economy, it is not necessarily true internationally. So when we provide, when providing these statistics, on one hand, we can better understand the cooperative sector, and on the other hand, extend 
the um, international comparisons. We conclude that in 2019 and 2020, there were 71 societies. These commercial companies, we collect information regarding these 60 companies. And 2019, they generated around 85 uh, million euros in GVA, and in 2020, more than 120 uh, million euros. There's been a growth in terms of this macroeconomic indicator. We also see that most of these companies were related to um, manufacturing industri industries, so it was the most relevant activity for, for GVA. And if we link it to the cooperative sector, GVA would equal or exceed 800 million euros. If we were to consider this GVA in the cooperative sector, the GVA of social economy would be h higher, and the weight of GVA of social economy within um, the national economy would be 33% uh, in 3.1%, uh, and in 2020, 3.2% to 3.3%. However, and this is news, for the first time, we're able to include information on the commercial companies participated by other families of social economies, namely the Cardis foundations um, and uh, mutual societies and societies with altruistic ends. So this was only possible because of the survey to social economy. It was possible to go further um, to have more information than were normally included in the satellite account identifying 63 societies in these um, families. In 2019, they generated six, 23 million euros in GVA and 14 million euros in 2020. They were responsible for uh, more than seven, 750 jobs both in 2019 and 2020. In this context, we realize that if we add this economic input to the social economy sector, the total GVA would be higher. It would go beyond 5.6 billion euros, but it wouldn't change the weight of the GVA of social economy within the national economy in opposition to what was the case with the cooperatives. The second special result we obtain which was also mentioned before, has to do with uh, the cooperative uh, branches. The Portuguese Cooperative Code, uh, which uh, defines the constitution or the incorporation of, of the cooperatives in Portugal, includes um, 12 cooperatives. Of the, of the cooperative may be multi-sectorial. Uh, these results uh, manifest on the main subsector, which is, which naturally explains the series of activities which are performed by cooperatives. Within the satellite account, the nomenclature of activities we use is a very specific one, which was mentioned, the international uh, classification of non-profit and third sector organizations. Within satellite account is very relevant because it allows us to classify in a more realistic way the main activity of each organization, but ends up by um, not having a close correspondence to the cooperatives. So upon request of this sector, in this edition, we decided to include the special um, results that, which enable us to conclude that the subsector of um, agricultural credit and education were the most relevant in 2019 and 2020. The third special result obtained has to do with the tax benefits. It is now, it was present the first time in the last edition, data from 2016. And it is now possible through information made available by the uh, tax authority. Uh, this information allowed us to conclude that in 2019, more than 10,000 social economy organizations benefited from tax benefits. And in 2020, uh, there's a slight, uh, um, a smaller um, numbers, 9,300 organizations. 
in terms of global amount of tax benefits in 2020, the uh, 212 million euros, which is below uh, the figure of uh, uh, 2019, 238 million. However, let me stress that despite this, this decrease, this global decrease, the fact is that the relevance of tax, the importance of tax benefits for the social economy in, to in the total of tax benefits social economy has increased in 2019. The relevance was 9.3 percent, whereas in 2019 it represented 7.4 percent. Examining the relative importance of tax benefits of um, social economy entities in the total tax benefits identified by the tax authority by type of tax, we see in 2019 a very similar scenario to when identified in the last edition. We realize that it's in VAT where there is a greater um, proportion of the tax benefits in a social economy because in 2019, 40% of the total tax benefits originating in on VAT um, were for social economy identities. Then there was the um, single road tax and then the municipal property tax. And in 2020, we see that there is significant change in as much as in the case of the municipal property tax, instead of 90%, the relative weight went up to almost 50%. However, there is a explanation, a mathematical explanation that explains this. Between 2019 to 2020, there was a great decrease of tax benefits for this tax, more than 70%. So the decrease had an impact on social economy, but it was a lower decrease of only 20%. So this is a reason why the um, weight of this tax is much higher than the one identified in 2019. So now there's the distribution of families per social economy. These are the, um, the associations. These are the group which um, represent the higher uh, share of tax benefits in more than 60% both in 2019 and in 2020 followed by misericordia um, charities in these two years. And for the first time ever, we have a special result for the IPS as private social solidarity institution, and they account for around 4% of all tax benefits in 2019 and 5% in 2020. Lastly, when we think about the origin of the tax benefits per type of tax, in similarity to what we've seen in other editions, we um, realize that it's a corporate income tax which mostly contributes for the um, total amount of tax benefits for this sector, more than 50 percent, both in 19 as in 2020. Having said this, the fourth uh, type of special results is related to the additional characterization of the jobs. So these two um, these two indicators are, no new and is, are nothing new because they were included in the previous edition. And I believe that it was very important to replicate them because they give us an additional detail on employment in these organizations. But they're closely linked to a fundamental component of this sector, which is social inclusion of vulnerable groups. Firstly, we've analyzed the uh, community service. Um, and this was only thanks to information provided by the Director General of Prison Services and Social Insertion. And I'd like to thank um, this organization, this department, because without this um, data, it would not have been possible to get these figures. And in 2019, at least 2,621 uh, individuals in 900 organizations provided um, community service. And in 2020, at least 1,496 individuals provided, um, made some community work for some of these organizations. The data provided just a sample of the individuals which made in, uh, community uh, work, but in both 19 and 20, more than half of these individuals were welcomed by uh, worked in entities of the social economy. 
the main family which uh, which this uh, work was provided were the associations with altruistic ends. In two years, more than 90% of individuals uh, worked for these associations. And also, for the first time ever, there was a, um, we calculated data for IPSS, and in 2019, uh, they uh, received 60% of these individuals, and in 2020, 19%. So there's been an increase of this type of community work providers for the IPSS. The main activities where these uh, individuals worked, social services, culture, communication, recreational activity, third, health, and this also is true for both years. The second production of results in this area, which um, we also repeated, has to do with uh, the TPA, the workers, or all the workers with some level of disability which work for social economy entities. Well, this production of results was only possible by collaborating with another entity um, belonging to the Ministry of Work, Social Solidarity, and I'd also like to thank them. Um, and this data provided enable us to estimate in 2020, 60% of all um, TPAs in social economy worked in social e economy entities, and this has increased in relation to 2019, which was 15%. These workers with some level of disability worked uh, for associations with altruistic ends that in two and in the two years uh, received more than 50% of these individuals, followed by misericordias, and lastly by uh, cooperatives, a final mention to IPSS, because again, they not just concentrate a great number of people with uh, some level of disabilities in the social economy in 2020, around 68%, but also because nationally, 11% of these workers work in organizations which are IPSS. And the main areas of activities are health, social services, which concentrated around 61% of these workers in both years, and thirdly, uh, the activities related with education. No, this satellite account, we were able for the first time to input additional detail on this type of workers, namely, we got to know for the first time that uh, most of uh, these uh, workers with losses or disability are women, about 60% in both years. And this is, uh, uh, funny enough, aligned with the known number that is known uh, regarding sex distribution, gender distribution in, of workers in the area of social economy. We also saw that most of these workers with losses or disabilities have ages between um, 64, uh, 65 or more years. Uh, we also got to know that most of uh, these workers have a level of uh, disability higher than 60% and lower than 90%. And in each uh, level of uh, disability, uh, most uh, the most predominant gender is uh, women. The uh, last um, section of special uh, data uh, has to do with the contribution of this sector for some of the sustainable development goals. goals. I say this is new, but in fact, it comes along the lines of something that was done by the survey conducted to social economy sector where we address this type of contribution. and. Um, we um, would like to share two of the contributions for sustainable development because these are uh, the only ones where we were able to estimate based on the satellite code. 
The first one has to do with industry innovation and infrastructures. In this case, we use as proxy two indicators. On the one hand, the weight of the uh, gross added value in percentage of the GDP compared with the same um, figure for um, social economy and employment in uh, manufacturing industry compared with reality of national uh, at national level we concluded that the contribution of social uh, economy is very reduced the below uh, one uh, uh, percent uh, but this is something one would expect because these activities uh, of uh, manufacturing uh, have a very significant weight both in the um, gross added value. They represented 1.7% of uh, um, the um, gross added uh, value, and therefore this is why they had a low contribution to the sustainment development goals. This is second um, objective is 10, the objective of reducing inequalities uh, uh, and considering the proportion of a uh, um, workers uh, in in this sector and also in the national reality, we see that there is only 2.4 percent of remuneration of econ social economy in um, GDP. However, when we look into this contribution uh, using another perspective and using another proxy indicator, which is the proportion of um, this work is in in um, gross added value. We see that in 2020, almost 90 percent of the gross added value uh, generated um, by this sector was redistributed by those who uh, generated this uh, wealth. Uh, whereas in the national economy, this amount was. Uh, around uh, 56%. So along these lines, we can say that there is a higher contribution of this sector for this uh, sustainable development goal. But these are only the two um, development goals that we were able to analyze with these data of the uh, satellite account. This has a lot, a very strong contribution for um, other uh, objectives and uh, it is obvious the impact that the sector has uh, has when it comes to um, fighting against uh, uh, poverty uh, access to justice uh, protection of the environment uh, so these are just two examples and I would like uh, to t use this opportunity and present yet two other one has to do with gender equality. These are data not from the satellite account, uh, but rather from the survey to the sector of social economy. And they show that, in fact, that that we have a majority of women uh, working in this sector. More than 70 percent are women. More than 60 percent of um, um, managers are uh, women as well, a unique feature in this sector. However, uh, when you go up the um, ladder, we see that there is a predominance of uh, uh, men, uh, meaning that uh, despite the fact that women are a majority, they do not have yet the same power of decision. However, once again, this is just one uh, perspective, because if we consider another proxy indicator, the weight of uh, the uh, males that are um, employed with the uh, um, managing position, um, we see that uh, it is much higher than the, the, the figure that we had um, that we have in the national economy. So we see that, in fact, social economy has a higher contribution to um, women participation in um, key positions uh, when compared to the uh, national economy. 19% of these organizations have uh, mentioned when responding to the same survey that they have mechanisms to guarantee the uh, minimum uh, level of participation per gender.
The second and last example also uh, from the survey to um, the social economy has to do with development for number eight connected to uh, dignifying work and economic growth. And we don't, uh, it is not surprising that we can see that, that the average gain in the sector is below the one that was calculated uh, in the same here for the national economy. However, we see differences when we look into uh, this indicator according to the gender. This crosses with uh, sustainment development goal number five, and we see that the average uh, uh, wage of women, uh, of men is uh, higher uh, to uh, that of women. The uh, gross um, uh, wage um, difference is, uh, is, is, is much uh, uh, bigger uh, when compared to um, the national situation. Um, this data did not say much vis-a-vis -vis, uh, discrimination in this sector. Uh, we know that more than 70% of these organizations already have uh, policies of uh, um, salary uh, parity. Uh, what happens in this sector is that there is a very big segregation of sex per perfection, uh, gender per perfection, where we find women with uh, remunerations, with average remuneration that is much lower than uh, when compared to professions that are typically performed by males. Obviously, there are other structural situations that um, will explain these differences, but this is probably the main one according to um, our point of view. So these were some of the um, uh, approaches to try to that we used to uh, actually uh, look into this uh, uh, situations and to actually see the big impact that uh, the sector has in the evolution of uh, rights and uh, um, other uh, evolutions to a truly sustainable development. And I conclude with uh, my final considerations, and it has been said here several times, we're speaking about a statistical product that has 10 years. It is a unique product, uh, um, unique in Europe and even in the world, because it has 10 years um, of age and has this capacity of providing data for different periods of time allows us to have a, a big capacity to understand and to explain this sector, how it evolved. And uh, one of the main features um, is its uh, resilience. And this was also mentioned by Karina. And uh, one of the um, capacities that we have today, one of the possibilities that we have is to show you this uh, uh, growth of uh, um, the gross added value when compared to the national economy. And we uh, can conclude that uh, the um, uh, GVA of the social economy grows, uh, shows the same uh, growth trend. Uh, uh, between 2013 and 2019, its growth was above that that was identified in the national economy. And during the last two years, uh, we see that uh, GVA decreases in the national economy, but uh, maintains with even a slight increase in social economy. So we. Uh, uh, have this feature of actually uh, serving as a sort of shock observer in, in uh, conditions and situations of crisis. Um, GVA increased uh, in the national economy. It in increased also in, in the um, social economy and had even a more dynamic uh, increase. And the same, the same thing can be uh, said when we compare the evolution of uh, jobs. Jobs show the same um, increase as that in the national economy. And in the last um, two years, we see even that there was an increase in social economy contrary to what we've seen in the national economy. Uh, so, uh, in the last 10 years, um, in national economy, jobs, the number of jobs decreased, uh, but there was an increase in uh, the number of jobs in social economy, and this uh, shows the resilience of the sector. 
And I would like to conclude by saying that um, despite the fact that this is a 10-year-old product, it is not a finished product. It is uh, a, uh, a product that continues to grow. We try to renew concepts. Uh, um, this is a sector that keeps evolving, and therefore there is a permanent need to uh, continue to increase uh, the uh, this account to incorporate more elements to respond to the needs of the sector. The satellite accounts uh, of the last two years is a witness of this very uh, same um, objective. And as uh, Mr. Eduardo said, we can see that, that this is the right moment. You know, after these 10 years, it's the right moment to actually uh, speak to uh, the different stakeholders of the sector to define the future of the satellite account and to um, try to uh, get to learn from our peers. We believe that this can help us to internationalize our satellite account. We've seen in the figures presented by Karina, we are still very much alone in the presentation of this type of instruments, and we would like to reverse this situation. So I would like to thank you for your attention, and I would like to say that all the information that was uh, presented here, specifically microdata, are available in the site of Statistic Portugal and also in the site of CASIS via the this QR code, you can uh, have, you can uh, access a publication um, and also the um, uh, special sections. And especially for those that uh, are with us from different countries, this uh, publication will be available in English uh, uh, as of the end of this year, of, the, of this month. Thank you very much for your attention. Para o encerramento da sessão, vai usar. We will be now listening to the Minister for Work, Social Solidarity, uh, Ana Godinho. Good morning to all. Let me um, greet the colleagues, uh, the President of CAS and Statistics Portugal, all of those who are here in this room in all the teams who work so that these results would be presented here. Congratulations. It's a result of a joint work, CAS, Statistics Portugal, and the JEP, the Office for Studies and Planning, all of those that enable these very complete results. This is the fourth satellite account with an evolution in terms of data analysis criteria, but also the ability to go further and to be able to have other interpretations on the relevance of social economy in Portugal, which allow us to carry out international comparison in the year that for the first time, the United Nations recognize the importance of social economy as a decisive instrument for um, cohesion across the world. We are here to, um, and we understood that figures um, talk about, about dynamic reality and a, a concrete um, solution to thousands of, of, of people in Portugal. Um, it's a multiple ability of social economy to respond to society's needs. And they furthermore show that social economy is no utopia. It is a very concrete reality. These figures show quite well the number uh, of individuals it reaches, the wealth produced, and the ability to have an impact on SDGs. Um, this um, sector, which is now being assessed, it shows that social economy is um, not an utopia. It's a social um, solution um, that society enable these to go beyond a mere uh, utopia. It is essential to have the figures to be able to uh, carry out an assessment and to understand the evolution of social economy um, in the last 10 years um, uh, in comparing uh, what um, was our reality 10 years ago, what it is now, and how um, how the way we could monitor and the assess uh, the gross value added. Uh, there was a um, GVA uh, higher than the evolution of the, social, of the national economy. So a great ability to show 
how social economy is, first of all, resilient. It's an evidence. It shows that in critical moments, social economy um, performs very differently from the so-called global national economy, be it in 2013 and mm, 2020 in, during the pandemic. Uh, social economy has been able not just to keep jobs but also create jobs in a context where in employment where in employment was decreasing during the pandemic i have other data which complement uh, what you, i'm saying which are the administrative data data from social security and this is a challenge that i like to leave with you which show mm, namely that in 2020 social economy has with over 300,000 workers which are registered in Social Security. So these, uh, you know, your figures are based upon service, but the Social Security data further confirm this great ability of social economy to become a great employer in Portugal. But it equally shows how resilience has um, other faces, the so-called polarization of social economy in um, those regions of low uh, population density. So this is truly important, these terms of resilience. So there are some regions which are somehow desertified where the um, national economy is not as dynamic as in other um, regions. Social economy in these regions have an added importance because it's precisely in those regions that they are um, creating jobs and they keeping jobs and they are providing several activities. So they're also both resilient and they are a great promoter of these uh, regions. The figures equally show how social economy I is essential and necessary in the different activities which have been um, presented, culture, health in the health sector with a very uh, manifest increase during the pandemic because the social economy has this ability to be flexible and to adjust to society's needs. And also um, on the social uh, questions and in the education sector. These figures really express how social economy has been able to reinvent itself a constant adaptation to the needs of society with a great ability to adapt to the, to the different circumstances. Social economy, furthermore, is a true uh, model of inclusion. And this new indicator, which you showed, is extraordinary in terms of realizing how social economy um, shows this a great ability to include uh, workers which are, have some level of um, disabilities, and they are truly integrators, uh, representing 60% of um, integration of people with some sort of disability. And another very clear um, example or model of a collective construction, very positive examples. Social economy is an example of integration of active participation of women in the labor market. Let us just think back. There are most spaces where uh, uh, women started having um, um, working outside um, the homes. So, but we have to go further. We have to go further in terms of equal salary and participation in women in top positions. And this is what really makes a difference. So, this um, results, you know, um, make us think about this challenge of bringing about some um, social evolution, um, social advancement, and the social economy shows that um, organizations are introducing mechanisms to correct. Um, this is inequalities and other challenges recognizing more and more the importance of social economy as essential pillar for democracy and of the new commitments and new social challenges um, it was we've clearly seen like the evolution of employment of uh, GVA 
implies the dimension of equality, of gender equality, the presence of women in the labor market, not just in numbers, but also in um, wage gap and in their presence in top positions. But together, we will have to be able to for salaries in social economy to become closer to the uh, wage uh, average in national economies. And this is one of the big issues for us to tackle. What we'll be do trying to do together is to follow the evolution of wages in Portugal. And I share with you in the cooperation agreements we entered with the social and solidarity uh, sector, we have a, a specific clause regarding the commitment of the organizations to um, be aligned with the goals for the increase of minimum wage and the evolution of salaries. So this clause is uh, specifically included in the agreements with the social economy, with the social sector, and in this a renewal of protocols um, with the social sector. We are now, we um, have this common goal of increasing the uh, reimbursements to the state um, for 2020. So there was increase of the payments um, by the state to so that can be a um, equal um, sharing of costs um, for the new challenges of the social state. So let me um, bring this intervention to a close. We live in times of change in, um, in the existing demands and in the existing responsibilities and social economy has been and you all know it quite well. The social economy is an extraordinary partner in tackling these challenges of this social, the welfare state. And social economy is one of its fundamental pillars. We have to strive to not just responding to the typical risks or the emergency um, uh, solutions, which we usually uh, have. But considering social economic as a size effect in responding to these new challenges of the new, more encompassing welfare state in the way it uh, is active within society. For instance, free kindergartens, um, which is one of our goals. The social, social economy has been essential or in housing sector or education, which are essential pillars for the welfare state but also in its ability to reinvent itself and reaching um, on. So we, this is um, our um, desire to create a um, center um, dedicated to the social economy. And the mission is to um, build the capacity of social economy across the sectors, both capacity building for innovation, in finding solutions, in capacity building of professionals, and in management. So it have the series of challenges we have to tackle with. Let me quote two references. As a dreamer, and I love dealing with concrete results, let me quote Charles Dunoyer. Um, with inspired by the spirits of uh, equality and fraternity and freedom said the social economy must have must have a moral focus of economy which is um, which focus on men and not focusing on um, capital wealth or financial wealth but also uh, quoting Ava Garrido, social economy is really a virtuous idea that invests in an alternative society um, based upon um, economic relations with an altruistic um, purpose. This is what characterizes that 
Now that today we're showing that social economy is truly a materialization of this virtual, uh, virtuous idea that we all defend and which is not an utopia. Thank you all. Damos assim por encerrada. And uh, we would like uh, to say that this uh, session on the presentation of the satellite account for social economy for 2019-2020 uh, is uh, closed. Thank you very much for being with us.